First of all, I'd like to thank each and every one of you for coming out uh, this evening. By standing here on this square with us, you are declaring that you are a friend of human rights, a friend of liberty, a friend of democracy, a friend of Israel, and a friend of Gilad Shalit and the Shalit family. Thank you. The protection of human rights used to be a simple concept. It was founded on the belief that all human beings are created equal and therefore should have an equal chance to enjoy rights such as life, dignity, health, and personal freedom. But these are complicated times in which we are living and advancing human rights has become a complicated business. In these times, very simple concepts have been eroded by hypocrisy and double standards. These are times in which evil is called good and good is called evil. Oppressors are called victims and victims are called oppressors. Radical is called moderate and all of us are called infidels. Terrorists armed with guns are counted as civilians. Ambulances are used to transport arms and hospitals become military bases. Six million Jews surrounded by 300 million Muslims in the Middle East are called the unjust majority. That one's hard to understand. Self-defense is called intentional massacre, while the targeting of civilians in war is completely ignored. Israel, the only democracy in the Middle East, is called a repressive regime. Indeed, in these times, so-called human rights organizations are advancing human wrongs. The International Committee of the Red Cross was founded by Henri Dunant, a man who had a healthy sense of simple human rights. While seeing the systematic bigotry and anti-Semitism spreading throughout Europe, Henri Dunant supported the idea of founding a Jewish state. In fact, he was one of the, the, the only Christians who participated in Herzl's Jewish Congress. Today, the Red Cross has unfortunately fallen very far from innocent simplicity into a de very dangerous and complicated game. Last year, during the war in Gaza, the Red Cross shipped aid to the Hamas offices in Ramallah, where it was then trucked into Gaza and sold for cash to citizens. I think selling uh, humanitarian aid for cash in order to support the Hamas should be called a war crime. Unfortunately, this shipping route, which was opened by the Red Cross during the war, was then followed by several other humanitarian organizations. Jacob Kellenberger, the president of the Red Cross, has reached out a hand of friendship to the Hamas and the Hezbollah. Indeed, as we speak, three Hamas terrorists are enjoying diplomatic protection in the offices of the Red Cross in Jerusalem, where they have set up shop and they're currently holding press conferences from those offices. The Red Cross continues to visit all Hamas prisoners in Israeli prisons, making sure that they're treated with dignity and fairness in conformity with international conventions, which they are. Meanwhile, Gilad Shalit is prevented from any contact whatsoever with the outside world and is being used illegally as a bargaining chip in order to release thousands of prisoners and hundreds of terrorists with blood on their hands. All of these are blatant breaches of international conventions which are being ignored by the Red Cross while they have yet to even visit Gilad Shalit. We call upon you, Jacob Kellenberger, from this square to set aside the double standard, to return to simple human rights advocacy. We call upon you to return to the vision of Henri Donon. We call upon you to advance human rights in Gaza. We call upon you to stop collaborating with terrorist organizations. We call upon you to ensure that Gilad Shalit is receiving the necessary medical attention to visit him and then to publish a report on his health and his captivity conditions. By bearing the symbol of the Red Cross, you identify yourself as a Christian organization. Allow me to refer to your holy scriptures. In Matthew 25, it's recorded that Jesus said when he comes back, he will separate the just from the unjust, the sheep from the goats. He will tell the goats that when he was naked, they did not clothe him. When he was hungry, they did not feed him. And when he was sick and in prison, they did not visit him. When they asked when all this actually happened, he'll say, as much of you have done it to the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. Jacob Kellenberger, will you and your organization be sheep 
or goats today. Perhaps Gilad Shalit is the least of these brethren. Will you honor your self-defined faith by visiting him when he is sick and in prison? We call from this stage to all people of democracy and freedom to challenge the double standards of the international human rights community. We call upon you to stop supporting terrorist organizations which advance human wrongs under the guise of human rights. Kellenberger, you must choose today between advancing simple human rights or running a complicated business. And I want to speak to all of you who may donate or support the International Red Cross. The next time before you write a check, please ask the representatives of the Red Cross, what have you done to visit Gilad Shalit? Is the International Red Cross going to return to its roots and uphold principles of universal hu human equality? Today we choose to let our voices be heard on behalf of those without a voice. We will not let the same indifference which condemns six million Jews to systematic extermination on this very continent, be the silence which compromises the life of Gilad Shalit. Enough indifference, enough hypocrisy, enough double standards. We call out today to choose life, to choose equality, to choose dignity, to choose freedom. With one voice, we call to you today, visit Gilad Shalit, free Gilad Shalit. Thank you.